let's actually turn Wi-Fi off. We are running on a local host in our Chrome browser, so all of that is local. And then all of the back end, you know, everything that's going on with the model is running on our local machine. And again, you can see pretty nice um, inference performance, and we can even run this in air gapped environment. Okay, hopefully that gives you a flavor for what the chatbot can do. Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we've got a fun topic, and what we took on was a challenge of what is the simplest chatbot that we could go create using a local model. We've built this in 20 lines of code, but we want it to be fun, interesting, and useful. So what you see on the screen, this is the chatbot. It's not a very interactive UI. It's nice and simple, but let's see what we can go do with this. And then obviously we'll flip over. We'll take a look at the code and how you can actually start to set this up for yourself. So what we're going to start with is we're going to ask a question that, at least on my mind quite a bit, which is, do you create a compelling YouTube demo tutorial? I am always looking for tips and interesting ideas. And so let's see what the Phi 3 model has to say for us. Identifying your target audience, interesting topic or skill, plan your script. It's always a good idea to actually plan what you're going to say before you say it. Camera setup, always things can go wrong with that. Editing. All right. So those are some of the guidelines you know, from our Phi 3 model. Again, not, not too bad in terms of some of the tips that it's given us. Another thing that, again, we, we're always looking for are good insights. You know, so we're trying to get our startup off the ground. What are some good tips for developing a business plan? And again, as a reminder, um, this is the 5.3 model, the GGF version. It's all running locally. And you can see the pace in terms of token generation is pretty nice. It's streaming nicely onto the screen. The output is quite clear and logical in terms of the answers that we're getting from it, even on you know reasonably interesting and you know compelling topics like this. Now, the world is not all about business. I don't know how many of you have been watching NBA playoffs that have been going on, but again, you might want to ask, um, what is the most basketball, player positioning and movement, ball distribution, pick and roll, definitely seeing a lot of pick and roll, isolation plays for sure, off ball actions, transition game, high low post plays. All right, you know, pretty good. Pretty good view of some of the key tactics and strategies in basketball. But now let's let's come to something that probably all of us have googled at some point, which is um, I'm trying to develop a nice chatbot UI. Could you help to get me started with HTML and CSS? Okay, pretty nice, pretty nice. It's giving us some HTML. One of the things Streamlit is doing for us here is it's automatically picking up the formatting, so it recognizes us and formats it really nicely as code. Not too bad, not too bad at all. We'll do one last thing, just so you can get a sense. Okay, pretty nice. Hopefully this gives you a flavor for some of the things that you can do. Again, using the Phi 3 model, really high quality, state of the art, locally running model that's been quantized. One thing that again, might be kind of an interesting test and one of the things we've been experimenting with a lot is, you know, Wi-Fi runs in the background on so many different things. Let's let's actually turn Wi-Fi off. Let's just ask it a couple of questions now. Now we have Wi-Fi off. We are working in an air-gapped environment. And let's ask a question, you know, what were the causes of the Great Depression in the U.S. in the 1930s? Okay, pretty nice. And again, we are air gap now. All of this is running on our local machine. We are running on a local host in our Chrome browser, so all of that is local. And then all of the back end, you know, everything that's going on with the model is running on our local machine. And again, you can see pretty nice um, inference performance and we can even run this in air gapped environment. Okay, hopefully that gives you a flavor for what the chatbot can do. Now let's flip over and let's see how we built it. And again, our goal here was not to create the most complex feature rich chatbot. In fact, it was the exact opposite. We wanted to create the absolute simplest, fewest lines of code that we could, and yet actually do something that could be fun and useful. All right, so flipping over to the code, we're gonna come back to this, what you see down in the terminal part of the IDE. This is actually how you run the Streamlit application. You actually go into the root of your folder path. You run the example with the Streamlit run command. Again, we'll, we'll come back at the very end to take a look at that. But now to flip open to the code itself. As I promised, the code, that is the whole code. So it is about 20 lines. Just to quickly orient you to the file, you can find this in the LMware repository under examples in the UI 
uh, subfolder. You will need to import Streamlit. That's what we're using for the UI. It's really easy to pip install Streamlit. And then some of the UI elements here, we actually derived from the Streamlit tutorial directly on building a chat UI. So we'd encourage you that we provide the link there. We'd encourage you to go check it out. You can go build more interactive UI elements and build off of this. We do a little bit of configuration on the max output tokens, but then the entire application is right here. And we'll try to see if we can capture it all in the screen. So our title, the LLMware code, we're gonna load the model. And again, we can pick any model from the LLMware catalog. We would recommend a list that we provide at the end, which are you know, chat-oriented models that have been designed to be interactive in the ways that we just, we just showed. You can see some of the parameter settings. We, we have turned on temperature, we have turned on sampling because we do want a more interactive you know, kind of experience. Again, we've set a max output. You could experiment with different settings around this. Here is uh, the part that Streamlit does a brilliant job of taking care of for us. That is the core, this core simple UI element of going back and forth between the user and the assistant. And then the key line that's really doing all the work here, and it's, it, it's so innocuous looking, it, it might be easy to just skip over. In fact, I'll scroll up so that it's really more in, in the center of the page. This is the line that's really doing all the work. And the Streamlit UI is consuming a generator that's being provided from LLMware on the back end. And that's all in that. That is the LLMware generator. We've loaded our model. We're invoking the stream method on that prompt. And so this generator then fits really nicely into the streamlit UI. And that's what gives us that nice interactivity in terms of streaming the output as the model is writing it. And that's it, as promised. 20 lines of code take away some of the uh, the white space. The simplest possible construct that we could to have a nice interactive chatbot. And then to really have some fun with this, we would encourage you to use some of the other chat models that are in the LLMware catalog. We just used the 5.3 GGUF. You can see the performance, quality, and accuracy we think is really, really high. We think it's a fantastic, fantastic model. But we provide um, the Llama 2 chat GGUF, the Llama 3 a GGUF version of their Instruct um, quantized version, two different Mistral models, the Open Hermes on Mistral, and then the Hugging Face Zephyr, which is also on Mistral. Both of those are 7 billion parameter models. They'll run a little bit slower. And then if you want something really, really fast and you really want to experiment, try the Tiny Llama Chat GGUF. This is a 1 billion parameter model that when quantized comes all the way down to a 670 megabyte binary. So it runs actually really, really fast, but you will see there is a little bit of a degradation in quality for these types of chat interactions, especially compared to something like um, Phi 3 or some of the other larger models. That's it. So here's a nice script. What we would encourage you, use this as a starting point then that you can build out more interactive elements, whether it's using Streamlit or plugging in you know, a JavaScript UI. And then on the back end, um, really use this just as the starting point for baking in a whole set of, of richer interactions using LLMware and really tying in retrieval augmented generation. Now, as I said, if you've not used Streamlit before, the best way to do this is put the file that you're gonna run, put this example in your root path of your folder directory. And then all you have to do is, is do this simple command to actually run the file. Just that, that immediately goes and it opens up our chatbot. And so now um, perhaps to close, we're gonna ask our chatbot the key question. Is a demonstration a running chatbot a good topic for a YouTube tutorial video? Let's see what it has to say. All right, so Phi3 and our chatbot, they like what we've done here. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it as well. Have some fun, and it's a really, really simple framework. It's designed to be something that you can really fill in with whatever content you're looking to do and have a little bit of fun playing with it. So as always, check out the example in the LLMware repository. Any questions, comments, or issues, please come join us on Discord. Thank you, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.